Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Ohio University's history is rich and deep and intimately connected with the great American democratic experiment. The men who fought in General Washington's Revolutionary Army were paid with bonds that said if and when the government becomes solvent, the government would try to pay those soldiers for their very fine services of fighting and winning the Revolutionary War. Three years went by. The chances of those pieces of paper turning into cash were slim or nil. But another idea had emerged. As early as 1785, Thomas Jefferson had introduced an ordinance into Congress that would have allowed for the peaceful expansion of the country westward and would have allowed those men to turn in those worthless pieces of paper for valuable land. But that bill got bottled up in Congress, and the veterans of the Revolutionary War turned to one of their leaders, Manasseh Cutler, the man we revere as the father of Ohio University. So Cutler took off from Massachusetts and journeyed to New York. And here were the two key ingredients these veterans in the greater Boston area insisted be included in the ordinance. The first was there had to be a strong anti-slavery provision. And the second condition was it had to have a future. They had to have some means of educating their kids. And the language that we believe Cutler authored because it was not in the ordinance as originally drafted is that language that is inscribed on the Ohio University class gateway as you enter the college green across from what is now known as Old Baker Center. And that language reads, religion, morality, and knowledge being necessary to good government and the happiness of mankind, schools and the means of education shall forever be encouraged. The Northwest Ordinance of 1787 was passed. Ohio University is the first fruit of that provision in the ordinance. By the fall of 1787, the first settlers were on the move, led by General Rufus Putnam. They had a plat map of this area, and they looked at that map, and they put a dot on it, and they said, okay, this is where we're going to put the territorial capital, Chillicothe. Then they drew a line from that dot to Marietta and said, we're going to put the university in the middle. It was 1797 before uh, Putnam got the first group of settlers to Athens, but almost immediately, there wasn't anything here. They were just building their first little log cabins, much like the Bingham House, which is the one log structure that survives from that era. But Putnam was already writing back to Cutler saying, all right, where's the plan for the university? As one historian said, Ohio University began as an idea surrounded by a wilderness. Education was a vital factor in the successful expansion of the democratic experiment as the country moved westward.